All right. Hey, hey, welcome to the high level schedule spreadsheet and video. Thank you so much for downloading the free template off of davidwindsor.com. If you haven't downloaded the template and you just happen to fall upon this video and you're watching this video about high level schedules for your construction site, you can go to the description and download this template right here, or you can go to davidwindsor.com to get your free downloadable template for this particular video. You might want to download that if you haven't to do a little follow through on this. This is pretty simple. This is a high level schedule. I know sometimes these colors, these numbers, sometimes these things look a little intimidating if you've never seen a schedule before. But the thing about scheduling is it's really hard to track. You need to stay on top of it. You need a lot of input from your team. You need a lot of you know, weekly interaction with the schedule. The only way for a schedule to actually work is to track the schedule and document the things that are happening in the schedule. So we use for really in-depth schedules, uh, softwares like job tread we've used builder trend before you can go to google sheets and look at like a template or excel and look at a template you can go to fiverr.com or upwork.com hire a freelancer and they can do it for 20 bucks they'll probably build you a template so you can get like a really in-depth excel gantt chart and gantt charts are a lot more smart so you can input dates and then push dates and do durations and this and that and the excel spreadsheet moves so you don't have to update it because it actually moves the whole schedule around so you can do something like that. This is a really high level schedule. Uh, you know, high level is like a 30,000 foot view. So it's just a big overview of what's happening. It's not really a super in-depth way to track a schedule, but it is a way to do it. And if you have smaller projects or you're not really good with software and you just want to get into some different things and you just want to start tracking schedules, this is a great entry level for it. So this is kind of like a tact schedule, T-A-K-T. -T. It's kind of like a simple tact schedule, nothing super in-depth. You can go as in depth with these as you want, but let's just start off, you know, about this. So the first thing you want to do is if you haven't already, you want to go to file, you want to make a copy of this, and then you want to save the copy as something. I mean, you can leave it as high level schedule if you want, or you can change it to David's construction company schedule, whatever you want to do. So that being said, I've broken the schedule out into two different sections. So section one is the interior of the building. Section two is the exterior of the building. If you don't want to do two different sections, if you just want to build one chronological schedule, you can. You can do that. Sometimes we like to track different things going on at different times because we may be saying that siding's going on, but simultaneously, why siding's going on? We got drywall, tile, hardwood floor, you know, and interior paint. Why all the siding's going on? So we like to track the exterior and the interior. And the more in depth you can be with your schedule, the more opportunity you have to hit your scheduled dates. And we'll go a little bit more in depth of that, but the more in-depth in, um, information you have in your schedule about what's happening, the more you can track it and the more you can hold people accountable. So a couple of things, let me start you off with this one. So up here, all you gotta do is change the date, whatever year you're in. So 2024, 2025, all you gotta do is just literally double click it and then change the date. So that's right here. And then same with the the dates. So you can just change to September, October, November. You you can even like copy paste one over um, if you want to do that. And then each box represents a week. So you can track it daily. Let's say you're only doing like a two month remodel. You might want to track it daily rather than weekly because it's such a short schedule. But this is over the course of, you know, 18 months. You might want to track it month or week by week. So that being said, each schedule represents like the week of the 9th, the week of the 16th, the week of 23, the week, you know, and so like for, for instance, December has five um, weeks in its month this year in 2024. So you'll, you, that, that, that'll be the most time consuming thing that you'll do. The second most time consuming thing will be building this out to what your project's going to look like. So for the interior next year, and this is, this is a decent, you know, kind of remodel schedule you got here on an interior. And it's up to you just to kind of change the numbers and stuff like that. One thing I like to do is, you know, maybe make your inspections different colors or something. So every inspection is like bright red, let's call it. So you don't use bright red on any schedule. So no number. So number four wouldn't be bright red anymore. It'd be like a lighter pink. And then every time you see bright red, you know, over here, over here, over here, you know, it's a, it's an inspection. So you might want to, I definitely would input all the inspections. If I was building a schedule, um, I would input all the inspections for 
that you know that you have with your particular county your particular city and make sure that they're all in there for what you got to do so that way you're tracking it so after this particular date we have an inspection after this particular date the goal with the schedule is that you can hand this off to anybody in your organization anybody in your company that you can think of um like let's say everybody wasn't you know to show up for a couple of weeks everyone was on vacation someone could take the schedule and they'd be like, oh man, we just finished drywall. We better get an inspection for the drywall inspection. Whatever it is, they can track it a little bit easier. So this is once again, just a system to use a tool that you can use inside your business when it comes to tracking schedules. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward from here on out. So what all you're going to do is on the interior, you're literally just going to list the things that you want to put in there. You can just list it, everything that you want to do. So that's pretty straightforward. You're just going to input it, the data like that. Let's say, you know, to keep it simple, you know, you don't have to move around, change colors, find all these colors. So the easiest way to do this. And so let's say we're going down here and um, oh, I see a mistake there. So I'll just change this while we're here. So 17, so I had two 16s. So that's 18, that's 19, and that is 20. So let's just say I wanted to do waterproofing. Rather than having to type in 17 over here and changing the color, you can just simply go copy, which is control C, or if you're on an Apple, it's the Apple button C, or you can right click it and hit copy. Then you're just gonna go over to where you want it to be and you can hit control V, or you can right click it and hit paste. Um, then you can drag it too. So let's say you just do it one time, but you're like, oh, it's actually gonna take seven weeks. You just pull it all the way out and it, it does that. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so this, you know, so to waterproof this house is gonna take nine weeks and then you can stagger tasks throughout. So it's, it's nice to kind of stagger it throughout, but eventually you're gonna get simultaneous tasks going on. Obviously you can be doing tile and hardwood floors at the same time as you're doing cabinets, you can be doing final electrical, you can do certain things um, throughout the house. And so jobs can be staggered. But the biggest thing with the schedule is actually just tracking the schedule. So if you're using this high, high level schedule, something I might do is, you know, kind of fuck up the colors on your months, but that's okay. Um, you know, at least when you have a, your weekly meeting, so you meet with your team and everybody sits down, you know, your superintendents, your project managers, if you're the owner of the company, you know, you definitely want to meet with your project managers or whoever you can on a weekly basis about your schedule. It's it's pretty critical that you meet, you know, for 45 minutes and you pick up the schedule for every job. So you might want to just say, okay, guys, let's, let's say, for instance, we'll go right here, February 3rd. So I would click all the way up here. So on the, you know, the the columns here, ABCD. So I'll click on X. So it highlights the entire column. And then just for the sake of this, we're going to change it to like um, this magenta color. So now you can see this magenta color equals this week. So when you sit down with your teams, you go, okay, it's cl pretty clear. You know, today's, you know, it's the week of February 3rd and where are we at? Okay. So as, as we're going through this, you know, what's number eight? Number eight is the fire sprinklers. Hey, superintendent, have we started fire sprinklers? No. All right. We're already, we're, you know, we're two weeks in, we haven't even started fire sprinklers. Um, what's 10, you know, are we still tracking that on the, the week of the 10th, we're going to have um, an inspection for the four-way? Yes, you know, we are. So does that mean we're going to have the four-way inspection on Monday? And does that mean that insulation is going to start this, you know, on Tuesday or does insulation start Thursday, Friday? We should be starting insulation next week. Are we on track for that? This is just a great way to sit down with your team, get a really bird's eye view of what you're looking at and understanding where your tra schedule is tracking and where things are pushing and you know, you might just, okay, so what you can do is you can just click on the eight. And then if you click down here on the bottom on that little dot, you'll get this cross hatch and then you can just drag it. So let's say it's, you haven't started it and you know, it's going to still be three weeks and it's starting this week. You're like, shit, I got two more weeks because it's gonna be three weeks total. So you drag it out. So it's just a way to track your schedule and understand how you and your team are doing on each project. There's no other real scorecard in construction other than the schedule and the budget. But if you want to see how you're doing, you know, a good thing about schedules is you should start tracking your historical da data, especially when it comes to, to schedules. What I mean by that is your historical data is how long it took you to build a house how long it took you to do a remodel, how long it took you to do a demolition. As you start tracking these things, and I found the best way to track these is actually through photographs. If you start taking photographs every week, every day, doing daily logs, weekly logs, you start recording all the things that are happening on that job site, because in two years, you're going to forget what happened two years before. So 
you document all the stuff, but that your historical data through your schedules, you can say, okay, we scheduled that this job was going to start September 30th. That's what we scheduled. And then we scheduled that this job was going to complete on September, you know, on October in 2025. So we, we scheduled this job is going to be 13 months long. So where did we end it up? Did it end up 14 months? Did it end up 15 months? Did it end up 12 months? We can track that. And then you can start seeing what type of projects you can take on. So now you know that guaranteed you have enough historical data of your projects over the past two, three, four, five years, 10, 20, 30 projects. You now know that it takes you X amount of time to do X amount of project. And then you can track that. And then now you know how many sales you got to go out and get. Now you know how you got to prospect for the upcoming building seasons. Make sure that you have enough in the pipeline based on how much you already have in backlog so you know how much work that you need to go procure because based on your historical data, you have nine projects going right now and those nine projects are going to last for the next six months and then you need more work. Does that make sense? So tracking your schedule is something that um, it's a necessity and depending on how in-depth your projects are or how in-depth you want to be, you need to track your schedule and you need to recognize that it's a big um, it's a big compliment hand in hand to the project management team when they know where they need to be. That's how you set goals. That's how you set expectations with your clients. That's how you hold your employees accountable. That's how you hold yourself accountable. If I tell my superintendent, my project manager, hey, I need this to be done in you know 12 months. You said it could be done in 12 months. Are we going to hit that? Yes. Okay. And every single month we're tracking. Why aren't we tracking? Are we going to still hit this in 12 months? Like, what, what are we doing? Where do we need to pick up? It's ways that you can say, hey, this is your performance as a superintendent, as a subcontractor, as a project manager. Over the past six projects, you've delivered every single one of them, you know, four months late. That's 30% over the estimated schedule. Why is this happening? Because we have, you know, Gerald over here who is tracking every single schedule at one month under. So he's doing whatever, 60% better than you call it. So why is that? That's a great way to track how your employees are doing. So schedules are super critical, no matter how you use them. If you want to get super in-depth and use a software like JobTread, um, Builder Trend, there's other bu a bunch of Gantts out there, monday.com, or you can have someone build you a Gantt chart in Excel. Uh, we we use I, I sometimes use a Gantt chart in Excel, but I'd rather use a smarter software that you can download. And we use that with job trade and stuff. So this is a really high level schedule, but all you got to do is copy paste, replace this stuff. And it's pretty simple. Once again, thank you guys so much for following me. I really appreciate your support. You can always go to davidwindsor.com to get free more downloadable, downloadable templates. I'll be making these videos to share you, share with you how these templates work. And that's all I got. Also, if you want to be a guest on my podcast, I'm doing live one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's completely free. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm simply recording our conversation for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we're recording a conversation, potentially how I could help you in your business. And that's just going to be one of the episodes we'll release on my podcast, LLC. So if you want more about that, shoot me some DMs in the comments and we'll be in touch. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy your free template. Have a great day.